So I thought it would be a good idea to shoot a cinematic video, cinematic b-roll, whatever you want to call it, with my Canon M50, the mighty Canon M50. Okay, so I'll go over the camera settings that I used and I'll show you the behind the scenes of how I shot that cinematic sequence with some tips and tricks so that you'll know exactly how to do it yourself. And I want to keep it fairly simple today so that all of you can join in regardless of your skill level because you know some of you are already up here but some of you are still down here and that's totally fine because we all start down here. But before I show you how to shoot that cinematic sequence, I have to thank all of you again because we arrived at 10k guys, 10k, that's insane, that's amazing, you guys are all amazing and it motivates me so much to keep creating more of these videos. I'm having a lot of fun, I hope you're having a lot of fun too. And if you're new here, if it's your first time watching and you like these kind of videos then maybe consider subscribing too because why not? But anyway, let's go back to shooting a cinematic sequence with the Canon M50. Let's go over the camera settings first quickly and then we can go back to the forest for the fun stuff. And like I said before, I want to keep it fairly simple today. I'm using the neutral picture profile this time because we'll do a little bit of color grading. I'll show you that at the end of the video, but very basic, no advanced stuff. I'm also shooting in 1080 at 60 frames per second because we're not dealing with fast action here. I feel like you only need 120 frames per second when there's a lot of fast movements. When it's just people walking around, things like that, 60 is more than enough. You could of course also shoot in 24 frames per second, but I wanted to slow down some footage, so 60 it is. Alright, and 120 frames per second on the Canon M50 is also only available in 720p. It's okay, but you know, let's go for 1080 this time. And then just the usual for a sequence like this. Manual mode, shutter speed, of course double the frame rate at 120th of a second. Fixed ISO, usually try to keep it as low as possible on the M50. And a fixed white balance. And finally, I'm using the 22mm with a neutral density filter. Now look, it's not like you can't do this without one, but using a neutral density filter will allow me to get a shallow depth of field during the day in bright daylight. I don't want a shallow depth of field for all the shots, but for some I do, and then I'm going to need this neutral density filter to block some of the light, so I can open up the aperture all the way. You can find the ones that I use in the description, but just so you know, these are cheap options. The quality is not top notch, it's not like the expensive ones, but for most videos, for me at least, this is fine. Okay, now let's go back to the forest and shoot this b-roll. The first thing you need to do, of course, is find a good spot in the forest. Make sure that there are some interesting things around and also make sure that there's not too many people around. You don't want them to walk in the background in your frame. I don't want the sequence today to be too complicated. I just want to capture the atmosphere of the forest. But I did write down a short shot list. That way I don't have to think about it while I'm here shooting the sequence. And the first thing I usually do is go for the details some foresty details to get that atmosphere. And when I look around a little bit, the first details that I see are, of course, here, the moss. That looks really cool for a shot. What else do we have? I think over there, when I turn around, you can see the sun coming through the trees and we see all these little leaves there. It's gonna look really interesting too. And then finally also mushrooms. It's the mushroom season now, so I'm gonna get a few of those too. Right here we have a lot of these orangey ones and I think they grow in the moss too, so looks really cool. And I'm just doing the shot over and over again until I think I have a good one. So 
So this shot, I shifted the focus from the foreground to the background while doing the shot. So just with my thumb and my this finger on the focus ring and then while you move the shot, twist the focus ring to shift the focus. Looks really cool. So shifting the focus or focus racking, I think it's called in cinematographer language. But yeah, the idea is to shift the focus from the background to the foreground or vice versa during the shot. And there are two important things you need to pay attention to. First, get a good grip depending on what kind of shot you're doing. Sometimes I just use my thumb like this and that works pretty well. But sometimes, like you just saw, I use two fingers like this. It really depends on what kind of shot you're doing. And then second, always make sure to keep your camera leveled because when you're turning the focus ring, you tend to counter that movement with your other hand and then this happens. See what I mean? So with this hand, always keep your camera leveled. A little shake you can fix in post but keep it as steady as possible. It takes some practice but then when you nail it and you add a little speed ramp for example, it looks pretty cool. Now, adding a speed ramp is definitely not a must, but in these short sequences, it just works. If you don't know what a speed ramp is, I'd suggest to look up some YouTube videos on speed ramping, because it's an important editing technique. That's it for the details. Most important thing is get a lot of variation and also play with foreground and background so that you get a lot of movement. Now it's time to bring in Joanna, the actress, the supermodel, the... <laughs> So the first shot I want is a wide shot of Joanna walking through the forest. Simple. And again, I'm gonna try to use some kind of foreground to make it interesting. That was it for the wide shots. Now I'm gonna go for some close-ups and I'm gonna use the strap hack here. So what that means is I'm gonna put the strap behind my neck and then I'm gonna put tension on the strap. That way I can stabilize the shot more. It really helps. Okay guys, second interruption here because this is a really important shot for getting the cinematic look because the cinematic look is a combination of many things and one of those things is backlight. A lot of movies use it. When you backlight your subject, you get instantly more depth and atmosphere in your shot. Do you see that bright line here at the edge of her face? That's what you want. That's what creates that 3D kind of effect and this is just a soft backlight. So in this shot, the sun was behind the subject and you might think that the Canon M50 doesn't have enough dynamic range to pull off a shot like this, but it's really not that bad. This little camera is capable of a lot more than a lot of people think. So backlight, remember it, because it's one of the key techniques to get the cinematic look. Maybe another thing we can try is a detail of some sort, but then with Joanna in the background. In focus, out of focus, I don't know yet. We're gonna try some things. Okay. okay, and then the final shot is just a shot where Joanna walks off into the distance. Maybe the feet and then a cut to a wide, something like that. I've been using the CineStyle picture profile for a while now and while I do like it, I find it difficult to work with, to get good results consistently. So what I did for this sequence is use the neutral picture profile and I turned down the saturation and contrast and guys, I actually like the results a lot better. You don't have to worry as much about noise and the overall image just looks cleaner. 
Another advantage is that you also don't need to do a lot of color grading, just some basic adjustments and it looks really good. So what I did is first add some contrast and I like to do that with the curves, pull down the shadows and pull the mids back up a little bit. Then color temperature, we shot in the evening sun so it's okay that the image looks warm but I'll make it a little bit less warm because it's too much for me. And maybe also let's shift the tint to remove some of the harsh greens. I also find the image too bright in the highlights, so let's take down the gain a little bit and in the curves bring down the highlights. That's mainly to avoid that those highlights here in the sky look super bright. Usually a cinematic image doesn't have super bright highlights, they're never 100% white. And finally let's add a little bit more warmth, but just in the highlights. So in the color wheels, pull the highlights towards orange and red. Maybe also the mid-tones, just a little bit. And that's it guys, that's all I did. Now you don't even need to do this. You could also shoot in the neutral picture profile and keep the default settings because that will also give you a good image. It's up to you, but yeah, cine style, I don't know. I think from now on when I shoot with my Canon M50, I'll shoot in a neutral picture style. But I'll do some more testing and then I'll let you know. And that's it guys, I really hope you liked it and I hope you're still enjoying your Canon M50 because I sure am. I also hope that you learned something. If you did, maybe give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.